What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here, and you are tuned in to the newest uh, series on the channel, and it is the origins of Treeb. So, ladies and gentlemen, what the series is going to be, I don't know how many viewers are going to watch this. I hope a decent amount of you guys do, because I'm trying to put the series out so you guys know a little bit more about me and a little bit more about, you know, my come up, where... Uh, I came from what I was like as a kid all the way to where I am now as a 20-year-old adult. Uh, this is going to be, I believe, a three-part series talking to you about my childhood, then the next one talking about middle school, and then the next one talking about high school and recapping everything and tell you more about me and uh, things that I've faced during those times. And then, you know, a couple, because <clears throat> I've been out of high school for two years, so then uh, the last series is going to be the first couple of years that your boy was out of high school. Now, before I get into this series so you guys learn more about Treeb the Kid, because this is the childhood portion of this video series, I want you guys to know this. I am 25 watch hours away and 229 subscribers away from getting monetized, ladies and gentlemen. So that is big news for your boy. I'm so excited. You're, I've been putting in work like no tomorrow, like five, six days a week content for the last year. Like, I have been working really, really hard to get you guys quality Jaguar content and just quality video content as a whole. And the fact is that you guys have stuck with me. And the fact that I have 771 people subscribed to me and all they do is listen to me talk about sports in front of this camera from me to you, that is way better than me getting any sort of job in TV media where... I'm talking to a whole group of people and, you know, I work for a system. This is a channel I made and you guys are enjoying me, you know. And, like, I can't tell you how much that means to me, especially how in my YouTube journey when I was younger, you know, more people were hating on me more than not. So, um, the fact that you guys like me and the fact that you guys keep coming in every single week, every single day even... And watching my content, commenting on the video, you know, that means a whole hell of a lot to me. And uh, I hope this new series does get some views, get some traffic, and I hope you guys uh, get a little bit more of an understanding of your boy through this series. Also, your boy is going to start be making merchandise. I know I said this months ago that I was going to be making some merchandise but guys i need some opinions i need some opinions so hopefully if you're watching this if anything at all you don't have to comment about your boy's childhood or anything like that at least comment down below some uh merch ideas something you guys want to see something that you uh, signify with me that you would love on a t-shirt or on a hat and uh tell me if you'd buy some because you know i need to uh if i'm going to be doing this merch shit i'm going to have to buy a lot of t-shirts in a lot of different sizes so i got to make sure that you guys are down, and you guys will rep Treep Talks wherever you are and wherever you go, and that would mean a lot to me. So uh, all that aside, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be diving into the childhood of Treep, a little bit of a recorded autobiography a little bit uh, before we get into where I am today, and that'll be a new episode. So ladies and gentlemen, this is the childhood of Treep. Was it good? Was it bad? Well, let's see. Did your boy grow up in, in, the, in a terrible neighborhood? We'll see. This is the childhood of Treeb in episode one of the origins of Treeb. So last night, right, Bailey drank all the soda. And that's usually, that's what I've been drinking in the mornings when I make these videos, sit in front of this camera and talk to you guys to be awake. But she drank all of that last night. Hashtag Frick Bailey in the comment section down below. So... You know, I buy these peace teas. I don't even think I could show the logo. I'll get copyrighted. But, uh, you know, I used to, I bought this peace tea for me so when I could drink it, I could drink it at work. But now I'm going to have to buy another one on the way to work because I ain't got nothing to drink to wake me up this morning. So that is my option today is that peace tea. So that's what's keeping your boy up today. And that's what's going to get me through this story. So this is off script. I have none of this scripted. Uh, <clears throat> this is more just me speaking from the heart on all my experiences and uh, things like that. So your boy was born December 28th, 1998. I love how I'm on here making this. I'm, I'm really going to enjoy doing this because, <laughs> you know, I like talking about myself, I guess. But uh, 
you know, it's going to mean a lot to me if some of y'all do sit down and view this because uh, I feel like I have a story that needs to be told. So, you know, again, I'll stop getting sidetracked. Let's get to the story. So your boy was born December 28, 1998 in a little town in Layton, Utah. My father and my mother uh, were both military kids. My dad went into the military. So I guess he wasn't a military kid, but he went into the military when he uh, got out of high school. My mom was around the military her whole entire life. Uh, her dad was in it. Her two brothers were in it. And uh, she never was in it, but she was always around it. So she was always moving. She was always on different Air Force bases. And uh, she met my dad in California. They went to the same college uh, on base, and that's where they met. And then they had my brother. My brother was born March 17, 1997. He's two years older than me. Um, or one year and a couple of months, but he's uh, basically two years older than me. He's always two grades above me. So, uh, they had him first, and they had him, actually, in Portononi, Italy. So, you know, he was born in Italy um, during when my dad was in the Air Force, uh, and he was there. And I was born in Utah because my dad was there, obviously, uh, for the Air Force and for the military. So, that is why I was born in Utah. And I didn't live in Utah for very long, if at all. I think I'm, we moved to Lewiston in 2001. Lewis in Idaho, and in 2001, I would have been 99, 2000, I would have been three years old, so, you know, I, two years of living in Utah obviously mean nothing to me, so, you know, uh, I've spent from 01 till now here in Lewis in Idaho, this has been my home, uh, for those last couple, last couple, for, the, for my entire life, you know, this is, this has been my home here in Lewis in Idaho. Um, so when I got older, um, when I was way young, when I was four or five years old, my biggest thing I was into was Power Rangers and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And if y'all were never into Power Rangers or Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, y'all did not have a good childhood because that was my whole entire childhood. My dad used to wake me up at seven before he'd go to work. My dad would sell cars back in the day. Hey, wake me up. He'd be like, hey, Power Rangers is on. I'd get my blanket and I'd just lay on the couch and watch Power Rangers at 7 a.m. Now, these days, you would have to pay me so much money to wake up at 7 a.m. The only thing, well, okay, you don't have to pay me so much money. And, you know, I guess I've kind of been the same in that regard. But, you know, with my dad waking me up to watch Power Rangers, if I'm really passionate about something that's on TV, I'm going to get up and watch it. <laughs> because the, the Jags play in London at 6.30 a.m. here and your boy just gets up and watches it you know and that's why i think it's so funny when people that are jags fans in florida live on the east coast they're complaining about getting up at 9 a.m to watch a game i do that every single time <laughs> every single sunday i get up at 9 a.m to watch the jags play at 10 a.m you know like that's just my regular schedule so y'all just gotta y'all just gotta suck it up so you know that kind of was that was my early upbringing before I ended up going to school. And when I went to kindergarten, I met a kid named Bryce. Or Bridge, as you might know him. Yes, the guy that does the pics with me. I met him when I was only in kindergarten. Me and him have been best friends our whole entire life from that point on. You know, I was always a friendly kid. I never had problems getting along with people. That was, also, that was always one of my... Uh, biggest skills that I would put down, you know, on anything is that I'm a really good people person. I'm really easy to get along with. And, uh, me and Bryce from the time we met, you know, when, uh, we didn't even meet in, well, we were in the same kindergarten class, but we didn't become friends really until we started hanging out at our brother's football practices. Both of our brothers were on the same football team and we'd go to, uh, their football practices and, uh, it was at a park. So, you know, there's a park there, and I see this kid from my kindergarten class, and I'm like, oh, hey, let's play, let's hang out, you know, and we did, and we just became best friends from the jump, and one thing that <laughs> caught my attention that he was wearing that uh, really solidified our friendship was he was wearing a John Cena t-shirt, ladies and gentlemen, and again, your boy, from the time he was young, was a pro wrestling fan from the go, ladies and gentlemen, and I still am, you know, I, I, I'm not afraid to admit that. I still like pro wrestling. I don't watch it nearly as much as I used to. I'm pretty casual in that aspect. But on YouTube, I'm usually watching a lot of wrestling content. Because I like to know what's going on. I just don't like to sit down and watch the three-hour Raws anymore. You know, I like to 
hear people that are experts in the field discuss, you know, whether it was good or whether it was bad. Shout outs to uh, Cultaholic and What Culture Wrestling, those guys. Uh, those are two of the guys that I enjoy watching the the most and talking about uh, Raw and SmackDown reviewing it and things like that. So uh, that is when I met Bryce and he was my first ever friend and my first ever best friend and he's going to be my last ever best friend too because me and him have been rocking bro. We have been rocking ever since kindergarten. So more about my childhood. Let me see what can I tell you guys. So my dad really really taught me that you need when you have kids they need experiences and what i mean by experiences is is take them to that you know vacation take them to that event you know make sure that they are having fun and when i was in when i was in elementary school you know first second third fourth fifth sixth grade my dad would always be taking us places that we really wanted to go you know whether that be wwe events whether that be just vacations to california uh, Vegas, things like that, you know, my, not, not Vegas, <laughs> Vegas was a little bit down the road, I wasn't going to Vegas in elementary school, but, uh, you know, some of that stuff was down the road, but my dad always made sure that I had the dopest experiences no matter what, and, uh, fuck, by the time I was out of elementary school, I think I've already been to four or five WWE events, like, that was the pinnacle, man, I loved going to WWE events, and anytime they came to, uh, Spokane, Washington, which is, Usually the closest that they went, but they did go to Pullman, uh, I believe, once or twice. So uh, we did see them in Pullman once, and uh, that's only a hop, skip, and away. Spokane's like two hours away, but, uh, you know, Pullman's just a hop, skip away. But he would always make sure that we were having fun and that he would be the best dad possible. You know, I can't credit my father enough with how much he has built me, you know, and, like, turned me into the man that I am today, and it all started from elementary school when I was younger. So my elementary school experience, that was pretty good. You know, like, I mean, when you're in elementary school, you're not really, you're not really in the mindset of dating anybody. You're not in the mindset of trying to impress everybody. You know, you're just a kid out there that's looking to have some fun and meet some people uh, for the long haul. So I went to a elementary school that there's a lot of elementary schools around where I'm at in Lewiston, but this single elementary school that I went to, at least from when I was going, was probably the most ghetto <laughs> elementary school uh, out of the bunch, was uh, Orchards Elementary School. That's where I went in Lewiston, Idaho. And, uh, yeah, it was pretty ghetto. <laughs> Some of the kids that went there, man, like, I guarantee you, if you look at, like, my sixth grade class, and you calculate, like, the amount of people that didn't graduate or that are in jail uh, or have kids or had kids before they even left high school or and things like that, I guarantee you the rate would be huge. Like, like, I'm telling you, like, sixth grade was really when shit got real. And that's something that I need to explain to you guys right now is that here in Lewiston, sixth grade is still in elementary school. Junior high is 7th, 8th, and ninth, And in high school is 10th, 11th, 12th. So... If you guys didn't know that, that's what that was. And, you know, in elementary school, like I say, I had a lot of great experiences. You know, I did everything a young kid was supposed to do. But the sixth grade was really when everything kind of took a turn for your boy. And your boy really started to start growing up. So, fast forward to the sixth grade, ladies and gentlemen. And everybody knew me as just the biggest Jags fan in the world. And that's what your boy was, was the biggest Jags fan in the world. That's basically what everybody knew me as. They're like, oh, this is the kid that likes the Jaguars, even though he lives in Idaho, you know? And they suck, so why is this kid doing this, you know? And once you got older and, you know, like that shit kind of fades away. You know what I mean? Like... Once you get out of your young years and you hit 6th grade, right when you hit 6th grade, it seems like, at least in the aspect of where I went to elementary school, that's when you had to grow up, you know, and that's not true. That's not true. If you're a kid watching this and you're in the 6th grade or something like that, you don't need to just grow up right off the bat in 6th grade, but that was what was implant in implant. Which what, what, was it? Was it with my, my? Oh my god! I'm not even gonna cut that out because that was just crazy. Your boy almost had a literal second seizure on camera, <laughs> right there. 
you know, and that was just in my mind was the sixth grade. This is when you got to grow up. You know, you can't just be flaunting your Jags fandom everywhere. You know, no one cares. All anybody cares about is getting a girlfriend. <laughs> sixth grade is when every guy started to take an interest in girls. And ladies and gentlemen, I pray for sixth grade teachers, man. I do because you are in a room with, you know, and like in my class, dude, there was 19 dudes, six girls. Like, the girl-to-guy ratio was so bad. And, you know, you got... And I fucking prayed for all the little girls that were in the 6th grade class because you had 19 dudes choosing between 6 girls to try and be with. You know, try to get your first kiss with this lady. You know, do all that. That's another big moment I skipped over uh, that I think I should talk about. And, you know, I will talk about because it's funny. It kind of is. Uh, so I had my first actual peck on the lips kiss and girl, girl, girlfriend, you know, in the fourth grade. Uh, you know, I kind of skipped over that before I started talking more about, you know, girls and relationships and <laughs> in elementary school. So I had my first kiss and uh, it was behind this backstop, right, <laughs> at the school where these duties, that they called them, you know, they kind of kept the... They kept the controlled chaos going on in the school grounds during the school hours, you know what I mean? So, uh, they, they made sure not, nothing bullshit happened, but we snuck all the way over into that big corner. She gave me a peck on the kiss. I remember I was so hesitant, and dude, I felt on top of the world that day. Like, I can't even tell you, man. Like, I was walking around, I was walking around the playground, big flex, and I'm like, I just got my first kiss. Where are y'all at? Where are y'all at? <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and the funny thing is, is... Anybody that knows me and knows who my first kiss well, I'm not gonna put I'm not gonna put people on blast, you know, that's not me. Uh, the only name drops that I'm gonna do is people that are still in my life and that are still my friends, you know. I'm not gonna name drop random people in my video. That's just not who I am. So I'm not gonna name drop this one random girl. Plus if Bailey watches this, she's gonna uh, I wonder if Bailey will watch this, I'll be funny. But uh, you know, and actually, you know, fun fact too, uh you know, jumping back again to about the fourth grade, that's when I met Bailey. I met Bailey. Me and Bailey were in the same fourth grade class. Uh, that's when we officially met. And it's funny because here in Idaho, we go on these little trips called rendezvous because we learned about Idaho history in the fourth grade. And, you know, parents were chaperoning. And, and I was in Bailey's mom's uh, rendezvous group in the fourth grade. And she pulled up pictures of me, you know, sitting next to Bailey. And I was like, Jesus, man, you didn't even want anything to do with me, and you know, and there's there's more there's more stories to go along with that, but uh, we're gonna save a lot of Bailey and Troob stories for when we can get Bailey onto the YouTube channel. Every time I try and ask her, she just gets home and she's like, "I'm tired. I want to go to bed." Uh, you know, she she doesn't want to get in front of this camera and tell you the story. But uh, anyway, so going back to my first kiss, also in the fourth grade. This this girl, oh boy, she turned she turned out to be uh, one of the weird ones. Uh, once we hit high school, junior high, uh, I I don't know what her whole story was after high school because uh, she went to the alternative school or she dropped out, one of the two. But I just remember once I hit like middle school, like seventh, eighth, ninth grade, this girl was going around kissing other girls and like and i have nothing wrong i have nothing against that nothing against gay people nothing 100 percent. but you know when you're in eighth grade seventh grade in idaho and you see two girls kissing and like uh both of them were kind of the outcast girls you know they weren't necessarily the most popular you know it, it's, it's it's a culture shock you know you're kind of like what like those are the first like those two are the first gay people I've seen in person, like, kiss. Like, two same-sex people kiss. It's the first time i ever seen it. And I was in the seventh grade. I got exposed to that shit way too early. <laughs> I got exposed to that shit way, way, way too early. But, um, God, I don't even know where I was going with this. Oh, okay, so that was, uh, that was the fourth grade story about your boy's first kiss. So, you know, a little side story in there. But once you hit the sixth grade, man, I'm telling you this right now. The pressure of getting a girlfriend was on. Like, if you didn't have a girlfriend in the sixth grade, that's just like how wild my this whole thing was. If you didn't have a girlfriend in the sixth grade, you ain't nobody. Like, <laughs> like that was it. You know, if you didn't have a girlfriend, you're one of the weirdos playing Pokemon in the back, bro. Like, <laughs> so you know me, I wasn't going to be the weird kid playing Pokemon in the back. You know, I always, I, 
I'm not that attractive of a dude. You know, I'm going to admit that straight off the bat. But one thing that I got is charm. And I know how to talk. So that was a couple of things that uh, got me through getting a couple of girlfriends in the sixth grade, if you know what I mean. So, uh, you know, I had a couple of girlfriends in the sixth grade to kind of keep my my social status up there. You know, you talk to Bryce, man. He'll tell you about how he peaked in the sixth grade, how he would be dating all these pretty girls. And that was, you know, the best part of his life was the sixth grade. And I'm just like, God damn, dude, you gotta, you gotta realize that was the sixth grade, brother. Like, oh, you know, but I mean, if he wants to flex on that, he can, but you know, that was the big thing in sixth grade. My whole class was just a bunch of delinquents, man. I'll never forget when the whole class, the whole sixth grade class got in trouble for sexual harassment, literal sexual harassment in the sixth grade, we had to have the office, the school research officer from the junior high come to the elementary school to sit down and talk to us and be like, you can't have slap ass Fridays because that's that's why we got the call, you know, because we had this thing called Slap Ass Fridays or Tap a Tit Tuesdays in the sixth grade. We and like these kids went to this roller rink called the Rollerway. Rest in peace to the Rollerway. I never personally went too much. But uh you know, everybody, man, like would, you know, take that and bring it to school. So, you know, uh a couple of kids they could not they just couldn't go outside for the remainder of the school year. And it was like midway through the year and they had to sit in the office and, you know, I don't think they ended up getting charged with anything, but they, they couldn't go anywhere. You know, they were sitting in the office. They were, you know, apparently sexually harassing these kids. And I don't know why I put the air quotes in there. They're, they were, you know, like that's what that is. But, uh, yeah, dude, that was wild. And, you know, I, I just, there was so many, we made our sixth grade teacher cry so much. Like she would literally just sit there and cry in class and we just laugh it off and like, like, we just made this teacher cry, you know, awesome, but, you know, shout outs to Kelly Ward, too, if you're watching this, one of my sixth, my sixth grade teachers, a lady that, uh, one of my favorite teachers, one of my favorite, favorite teachers of all time, shout outs to Kelly Ward, if you're watching this, but yeah, we would, we would make her cry, and then I remember there's this one kid we had in our class, and he would just do the most wild shit, like, there was, we were outside waiting to come into class, right, there's a spider, up here that's having babies literally it has eggs on its shit what does this kid do he grabs a fucking pencil just throws it and the whole spider and the eggs just explode it was the grossest grossest thing i have ever seen in my entire entire life now i realize this thing's going to about 20 minutes so i'm gonna get to a big story in the sixth grade and then we will wrap this up ladies so my last story, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to wrap it up, make it quick for y'all. And if you've made it this far in the video, you must really care about trees, and I appreciate that. I appreciate you guys. But um, in the sixth grade was when your boy experienced his first heartbreak, dude, in the sixth grade, man. You remember I was talking a lot about how you weren't anybody in the sixth grade unless you were getting a girlfriend, you know, things like that. This girl moved to Lewiston from Moscow, which is a hop, skip, and away, kind of like Pullman from here, so <laughs> she came into town, and I, like, was mesmerized, man, like, I was in love with this girl from the second I seen her, man, I was like, oh boy, here we go, <laughs> I was like, Treve, Treve's gonna, Treve's gonna fucking run away with this one, you know, and I, I put so much effort into it, I made sure I was the first one she talked to, you know, I was talking to her, telling her, you know, how things go, and things like that, and, you know, your boy was flirting, you know, sixth grade flirting, getting my big flirt on, you know what I mean, so, you know, I was doing that, and I remember one of my friends came up to me, and was like, dude, I'm gonna get that girl, and I was looking at him, like, yeah, dude, go for it, but on the inside, I was like, you better freaking not, dude, I was like, you better freaking not, and then, uh, long story short on that one, he ended up getting with her, but I would always talk to her, I talked to her all the time, dude. We used to call each other. Like, that was that was the thing back in the day when you had those slide phones. You'd text a lot and you'd call them a lot. That, you'd stay on the phone for like an hour and a half with somebody. And I would talk to her, you know. And we're about to go on this big trip, you know, in sixth grade that you go on called Camp Whitman. You know, and you go there and you have a good time. You know, you learn more about like Idaho history, things like that. You go on hikes, um... You play volleyball, you play games, you do plays, things like that, normal sixth grade stuff. So, uh, 
we were about to go on that, and homegirl just broke up with his, his her boyfriend at the time, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna ask her out, and she's gonna be, she's gonna be my girlfriend, and I'm gonna be happy, and everything's gonna be good. What do I find out? My teacher comes up to me because I guess I've made it this obvious because everybody in my class was talking about how Trevin's in love with this girl, and I was like, she comes up to me, she's like, hey, I got bad news. I was like, what's up? And she's like. Britney moved, and I'm like, what? I just talked to this girl yesterday, <laughs> and she just up and moved, up and left, you know what I mean? And and she did, you know? She was there for, like, a month. She was in, like, our school for literally, like, a month, and then she moved back to Moscow. <laughs> and then that, that ruined my whole trip for me, dude. <laughs> I was like, I went there, I was not having a good time. I was like, dude, she freaking left me. <laughs> I was like, she just fucking didn't even tell me she was moving and i was texting her i was like you didn't tell me you were moving all this and all that she never texted me back and still to this day never texted me back like <laughs> so that was my first experience with heartbreak and i'm laughing because obviously you know sixth grade you know you can't take that shit too seriously but nonetheless it was pretty much it was a pretty big big part of my life and you know hopefully you know bailey's gonna watch this and laugh it off but knowing her she's gonna be like oh so this girl was your first love wasn't she you know you don't love me you know <laughs> all this and all that but no bailey's a good sport she's she's funny you know she's she's truly the love of my life like i said i've known bailey since i was in the fourth grade and i've always kind of had a slight crush on her and she finally wanted to date me in the ninth grade and here we are five years later and we're engaged so that is a great story for me and that's more uh, that, that's what's really going to get going on the next episode when we talk middle school going into high school, ladies and gentlemen. And that was chapter one of Treep's autobiography. What would you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, you can check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook, at Treep Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Treep Talks, or follow me on Instagram, at Trey Von Pixley. Also, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. Straight fact. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and as always, you guys have a great day.